Hey everybody, uh, we have just a little under nine minutes to go until tonight's puzzle for Advent of Code Unlocked. We're doing day two in uh, C++ here. Um, you can look at my YouTube channel, you can see uh, the previous solution for day one and the setup. So uh, while we're waiting for the puzzle to unlock, I did just a little bit of refinement of some things inside the repository here, cleaning some things up. So I wrote a few of these check macros, basically so that uh, we have something to use instead of assert, something that's a little cleaner, um, that doesn't depend on it being a debug build, and we'll spit out some nice error messages and exit the program when any of these conditions fail. So I have just a generic one here for binary conditions. I have a uh, check OK macro that I wrote here for things that are like uh, abseil status or abseil status or. And uh, if it's not OK, it will uh, not only give us the, the file and the line number, it will actually spit out the uh, error message from the status too. And uh, then I just have this check fail here for if we get into a place in the control flow where we're not supposed to be, just exit the program there. So um, a lot of these, like, these will look really familiar to you if you've ever used the glog library, the Google logging library. I thought about importing that into the project, but uh, it's a little bit of a heavyweight dependency when all we really want is the check macros, so I sort of just wrote these minimal ones myself. The other thing I did uh, since our session last night is I took out the common logic for just uh, parsing a list of integers from a vector of strings and uh, made this little function here. Uh, I did decide to template it just in case, you know, at some point in the future we find that we need to parse like some bigger integers, like some int 64s or something, but um, just defaults to int and yeah, so you can see how this works. Makes a vector of integers, same size as the input vector of strings. Iterate through all the inputs. Does the absolute simple a to i function on them to actually parse the integers from the strings. And, um, you know, if it fails, returns an error, otherwise returns that list of integers. So you can see that, you know, I then went back and changed the solutions from yesterday so that they're using those new parse routines and this new check stuff. So I didn't go back and change away from a brute force solution for yesterday because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I did kind of think of a way uh, that for part one, we could do a linear time solution instead of n squared. And that would be to uh, just build a lookup table um, as a, a a hash map or a hash set and so you know for any given number you know we could subtract that from 2020 and just see if it's in the lookup table or not so you do one pass to build the lookup table then one pass to do lookups but both of those are in linear time or I suppose that you could actually you know build it as you go and probe you know what already existed and that might work too um, day two you could do something similar except that you would have to um, build a lookup table for all the combinations of, uh, of all the sums of two. So it would be n squared still to build that lookup table. Um, but yeah, that's just an idea to make it a little more efficient. At some point I might implement it, maybe not. I have a feeling that as we go on in uh, the puzzles, we're going to see some where it becomes more and more important for us to actually think about um, algorithmic complexity and efficiency. Uh, that's definitely something that happened last year. Like there were uh, problems in Advent of Code last year where um, a naive solution would not possibly finish in time for the inputs that they gave you. Um, so I, there was like some pathfinding stuff where you really want it to be um, like it, where you really need to uh, use dynamic programming to um, remember the like sub problems that you'd already solved. So I don't know if that 
I don't remember if it was like exactly Traveling Salesman, but it was something similar to Traveling Salesman where you kind of uh, had to remember your best solutions for sub-problems, otherwise the complexity just went totally out of control. So, uh, looks like we still have about three and a half minutes until tonight's puzzle unlocks. Um, yeah. So, kind of just staring at the, uh, at the calendar here. So I did see on the leaderboard that uh, the little uh, outage that we experienced trying to get our puzzle inputs last night uh, was not unique to us. So they actually decided to not do to not count uh, day one on the time leaderboards um, because some people like me didn't get their inputs on time. Uh, I saw on Twitter today that um, I. I may not be remembering these stats exactly right, but something like from 2018 to 2019, like the day one traffic for Advent of Code, like the level of interest increased on the order of maybe 20%, whereas from 2019 to 2020, it surged by 150%. So a whole lot more people are getting into Advent of Code this year. I think that is really, really cool. I think that's a lot of fun. I think um, it's also, you know, I mean, this year is the first year that I've live streamed it. I've kind of been inspired to do that by some other people whose streams that I've watched that are really cool. So, um, shouts out to uh, Liz Fong Jones, who uh, does a really cool stream of uh, Advent of Code uh, that uh, in Go, and uh, also covers like a lot of like uh, education about like CS concepts that go into the puzzles. Uh, besides just solving them. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and look at our calendar again. So we're just under two minutes. I'm gonna start this very, very soon. Oh, uh, I should actually just use these couple of minutes to make a little tiny scaffolding um, just for the program that we're gonna run here. So, let's, oop, no, I don't want it there. We'll put a new directory under puzzles called day two, part one. And we will go ahead and have our minimal program in here. And we'll make a little build file for it for Basil. go ahead and compile and run it. Um, okay. I typed Blaze instead of Basil because of muscle memory from work. Okay, and the puzzle has just unlocked, perfect timing. So, password philosophy. Your flight departs in a few days from coastal airport. It's via toboggan, oh, we get to go sledding. Uh, password database is corrupted. Some of the passwords wouldn't have been allowed by the corporate policy that was in effect while they are chosen. Created a list of passwords according to the corrupted database and the corporate policy when the password was set. Okay. Each line gives a password policy and then the password. Password policy indicates the lowest and highest number of times the given letter must appear for the password to be valid. Okay, so 1 to 3a means that a has to occur at least one time and at most three times. So it's just an inclusive range. Um, in the above example, two passwords are valid and one is not. Okay, let's get our input.
let's go ahead and see how that looks. Okay. So what we're going to do here is we are going to read in the lines of the program. We're going to read lines from RV1. We're going to check and make sure that argc is 2. Sure, we get that included, and then uh, we'll parse each line, I guess. So, um, I guess you scan it, I guess. Definitely could do that. We could also use like a string stream for the input, but um, well, first let's let's make just a little struct um, to describe the to describe the password and the policy together. So we'll say we'll have a character that is the validated character. We'll have in integers for min and max occurrences. Have a string for the actual for the actual. Um, I don't like having, eh, it's fine. You can call it password inside a struct name password. Uh, so now we need to do something to parse it here. So we'll do string view. So, um, I might, uh, just because scanf is the like uh, easiest thing that I can think of to do this right now, I may just go ahead and do this in a quick and dirty way where, you know, I'm looking here and none of these passwords seem to be like, you know, too crazy long. Um, so what the hell, we can just put it, put a little buffer in for the the password. 100 bytes should be enough for anybody. Make it 128, a nice round number. And so we will then inside a check. Well, let's just write our scanf first and then we'll worry about checking it. So uh, we're going to So our format is going to be, now I have to remember my format specifiers. So um, that is going to be a couple of unsigned numbers separated by a dash. There's gonna be a space. There is going to be a single character. There is going to be a colon, and then there is going to be a string. So I'm going to fill in the fields of this now. So we're going to have result dot min 
Yeah. It, well, you know, it might actually want want these to be unsigned to match the format specifier, so we'll go ahead and make these unsigned. I don't know if it'll actually care. Result.max. Result.validated char. And our password buffer there. And we want to make sure that it reads exactly four items. I'll just make it format this so that we're not going left and right like that. And we put, we go ahead and result dot, we put the, put the password that we scanned into our flat care buffer into the real string there and return the result. So we've got our lines from the file where we've read this stuff. Um, let's now make a, a method for this struct to see if it's valid according to the policy. So to do that, we need to count the number of occurrences of this validated character in the string password and just see if it's in the range between min and max. So um, we can probably use accumulate to do that, although maybe does string do that as Okay, so we'll use from the algorithm library, we'll use, um, we'll just use count. So, standard count for pass. And then validated car is what we're looking for. And it's just inclusive range, so we just want need to make sure that min is less than or equal to occurrences, and occurrences is less than or equal to max. Easy peasy. And now, uh, let's just count them up. So we'll just loop over all of the lines that we read from the input file. For each one of them, we will parse them as we will use our parse password routine to turn it into this struct. And then we can use the isValid method to see if it's actually valid. And so it's numValid. Of course, we should have initialized that to zero. And then we can Fun fact, adding a bool to an integer, if it's, tr if it's false, adds zero. If it's true, adds one. Um, I mean, maybe to be, you know, extra nice and clean about it, we could uh, we could actually explicitly cast that or use a ternary expression, but it's going fast right now. Okay. So we've got our program now that will hopefully work on this input. So let's go ahead and see what it tells us for 
copy too and see if this actually works. Okay. Oh, yeah. Obvious. Hey, you forgot all of the dependencies, Craig, of course. I forgot the dependencies. Um, so we're going to need abseil strings. And again, I am just copying. Yeah, okay. We're going to need check and IO. So we'll go ahead and take all that stuff. And well, we need status or directly, but we definitely need strings. Now let's go. 398. Uh, now, should I have, you know what? I'm going to live dangerously and just actually try and put this in without doing any other validation. Let's see if we're right. That's part one in the bag. Um, let's go on to part two. So while it appears you validated the passwords correctly, they don't seem to be what they're expecting. The shopkeeper realizes that he accidentally explained the password policy rules from his old job at the sled rental place. Official toboggan corporate policy works differently. Each policy actually describes two positions in the password where one means the first character Two means the second character, counting from one, not zero. That's just, uh, yeah, to my corporate policy, so no concept of index zero. Exactly one of these positions must contain the given letter. Other occurrences of the letter are irrelevant. Okay. All right. So we just got to find them exactly one. So we just basically, well, okay. So first thing I'm going to do is actually just commit my initial version is like, just commit those. Um, and then basically we got, we just have to change the is valid routine. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy the whole directory. Am I on the right screen? No, I'm not. You're not actually seeing what I'm doing here. So yeah, we just have to change the is valid routine. So I'm just going to make a copy of the whole directory. Um, can you refresh? There you, you see it now. So, um, the, so instead of counting up the validated occurrences, um, We just need to see if there is exactly one. So, assuming that we don't have out of range string access, and again, you know, like if this were production code, we would want to, you know, make sure that all these indexes, this min and max, are inbounds. But, um, just look into the password uh, so we have the min index minus one because uh, there's no index zero in this system and we'll see if that equals the character that we're looking for and do the same thing for the max part Basically, we want one of these to be true, but not both. So uh, we want it to be, can we just XOR these straight together? I, I always forget if you can do that on bools. Let's, uh, let's try it. Because we want one, but not both. That's an XOR. Oops, didn't mean to do that. But yeah, looks okay. Let's, uh, that should be all we need to do. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see if, um, see how it works. So we'll change to the part two here and see how many are valid according to this. So it says 562. Should we try it? Let's try it. See if I, I've made a horrible mistake. I haven't, we've done it, okay. 
So, this was another pretty quick puzzle today. Uh, thank you to everybody for watching. Um, so, I would say, you know, this one's pretty simple. I can't, I'm, I'm not really thinking of uh, algorithmic ways to make it a whole lot better. Um, because it's basically just like simple linear stuff either way. I guess maybe part one, if we can go back and look at part one again, one thing that we could do here is instead of using count to just accumulate all the, um, the complete number of occurrences of, of this validated character inside this password string, we could short circuit out of that. You know, we could write our own count routine and stop as soon as we get above max because we know for sure that uh, the password is not valid then. I don't really think it's worth doing that optimization. Um, and for this other one, I mean, we're just looking at two places in there. I guess the, the things uh, for the sake of cleanup that I might want to try and fix are uh, I don't like just um, scanning blindly into this buffer, you know, that could possibly overflow. Uh, that is not that is not an ideal way to do uh, string parsing. Uh, it, it was a way to do it really fast because I figured, you know, like I can write an S scanf. I can write this little format specifier here for S scanf pretty quickly because I recognize what the um, what the format for all of my puzzle inputs are, I would say um, there are definitely better way there are definitely better ways to do that. That was just a like the fastest way that I could think of um, using C plus uh, plus string streams is one way to do that. Um, you know. Yeah, you know, that's something I don't act, I don't actually remember that well. Maybe I, w I want to do a little bit of research. So you know what? I might uh, kind of fix that scanning and um, upload the fix into uh, the repository on GitHub. And then maybe uh, before the start of tomorrow's stream, I may talk about that a little bit more of, uh, you know, how I actually made the parsing a little bit safer. Uh, instead of just blindly reading into that buffer. But uh, I'm not gonna, I'm going to spare you me Googling uh, to remember how to use standard IO. Um, so for now, uh, we'll go ahead and call it a night. Thank you to everybody uh, for watching the stream or if you're watching this later on YouTube. Uh, I'm gonna be doing these if not every night in December, most nights in December, we'll be working through these solutions in C++. You can always um, look at the code on my, Git, on my GitHub repo. So it's um, github.com slash Craig Chasser slash AOC 2020. You see, uh, you see that right there. These will also go up on my YouTube channel, the recordings. So thank you again. To, so just once again, thank you to everybody who tuned in. And I'll see you all tomorrow night for day three of puzzles. Bye-bye, everybody.